Hi and welcome to this lesson on electrochemical cell reactions. So let's remind ourselves of using the standard electropotential and we're going to learn about how to calculate the EMF or the electromotive force or sometimes called the cell potential. So in an electrochemical cell electrons flow from the more negative electrode to the more positive electrode. So using the direction of the flow of the electrons and the standard electropotential, remember this here, the values, you can work out the standard cell potential or the EMF, the electromotive force of an electrochemical cell. We always show the half cell with the more negative standard electropotential on the left and that is the one that's more easily oxidised. So to calculate the EMF, we can say that that is the standard electropotential of the right hand electrode or where reduction is happening minus the standard electropotential value of the left hand electrode or where oxidation is happening. Or what I like to think about it as is it's the standard electropotential of the more positive electrode minus the standard electropotential of the more negative electrode. Sometimes I find that a little bit quicker to think about. Remember the EMF, the electromotive force, is the voltage produced by an electrochemical cell, which is of course two half cells, under standard conditions. So half equations can be found using the direction of the electrons flowing. So electrons flow from a metal wire with the more electrons with the most negative electron potential to the metal with the most positive electron potential. So I've got an example here. If I put my redox pair in and then my redox pair on my other side, which is my copper, so my aqueous and my copper solid, and I put their potentials in. So 0 0.76 volts and 0 0.34. So the direction of each a, like half equation can be determined using these electropotentials. So let's have a go on the next slide. How can we use these figures here to know whether reduction or oxidation is happening at the zinc electrode, for example? So electrons flow from the zinc to the copper. So the zinc is oxidised and the copper is reduced. So if we've got the half equation at the zinc electrode, we're going to have oxidation happening. So oxidation is loss. So it's losing its electrons and at my copper electrode, I'm going to have instead copper being reduced. So it's going to gain two electrons and it's going to form my copper solid. So if I want to add those two equations together very nicely, my electrons already cancel out because I've got two for both. Then I can write an overall full equation. Plus Cu2 plus and that's going to be aqueous is going to give me my aqueous zinc ions and my solid copper. Here's a practice question to have a go at. You can pause the video and give it a go yourself or watch my work through. Here we're being asked to actually work out what the EMF or the cell potential is of that electrochemical cell. So let me remind myself of, of my half equations. And then I had my oxidation or my reduction happening of my copper. So there they are, I've written them that way round. And then I have my full equation. And so now I'm going to consider what my standard electropotential was for equation one and equation two. So equation one, my standard electropotential from the table was 0 0.76 volts. And for equation two, I went to my table and it told me it was plus 0 0.34 volts. You'll see they're always to two decimal places and I always give the sign. So even if it is a positive value, I put plus. They are going to want that. And if I remember how to work out my EMF, I do the more positive electropotential minus the less positive. So my EMF is going to be my more positive. So plus 0 0.34 minus my less positive. And I'm going to use brackets here to ensure that I don't forget that it's a minus minus. So 0 0.34 minus minus 0 0.76 is the same as 0 0.34 plus 0 0.76. So the EMF here 
is going to be plus 1.10 volts. And that's my answer. What you'll often be provided with in an exam is an electrochemical series. So it's a series of elements arranged in order of their standard electropotentials. And they're always going to be written by default as reduction in the direction of the reduction equation. And we can use those standard electropotentials that will be listed in the electrochemical series to work out the EMF or the cell potential. So again, remember, the more positive the standard electropotential value, if I add a little theta there, that is going to be the reduction direction and vice versa. The less positive electrodes, standard electropotentials, they're going to proceed in the reverse direction, so in the oxidation direction. If you do your calculation and the EMF comes out as a positive value, so you saw in the question before the EMF came out as plus 1.10 volts, so that's positive. That indicates that the reaction is feasible. So positive means reaction is feasible in the directions indicated by the respective half equations. So the prediction is only right though under standard conditions. As soon as you change the temperature, pressure or concentration of anything in that half cell away from the standard conditions we learned in the previous lesson, these rules no longer apply. So reaction feasibility, we've learnt that if we get a positive EMF value, that means that it's going to be feasible, but there are other things, the other limitations that dictate whether that reaction can actually happen. So we've got the reaction conditions, of course, so they need to be standard if we are to use the EMF to work out whether it's feasible. Reaction kinetics. Activation energy. If the activation energy is too high, then the reaction is not going to happen either way, regardless of whether we've got a positive value for EMF. And finally, Gibbs free energy. So, for example, a reaction may be feasible in terms of the EMF, but it might have a really, really high activation energy and therefore it won't proceed at a given temperature. How do we link electropotentials and entropy? Because you saw in the previous slide, I mentioned that Gibbs free energy is a factor here. So standard electropotentials, they're directly proportional to the total entropy change of a reaction. So EMF is linked to Gibbs energy by this equation. So there's my Gibbs energy minus N times the standard electropotential of the cell times the Faraday constant. So N, as always, is moles. So it's number of moles of electrons transferred. And F is my Faraday constant.